our beach days are numbered with school starting next week and fall weather on the way, but you can still sneak in a beach read. Yeah, so Chassie de Moreno is the reader services librarian at the New York Public Library, and she joins us right now in studio with some picks for end of summer books to binge. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's go through the list. So your first suggestion is a new take on a classic tale. Yes, so James by Percival Everett is a reimagining of Huckleberry Finn, told from the perspective of Jim, who was the slave who was on the run uh, that Huckleberry meets on his journey. Uh, it's amazing, and it's telling it from a new perspective and giving humanity to a character that otherwise was uh, secondary in the other book. And it's really amazing. And for people who have read the book, or even not necessarily read Huckleberry yeah. Finn, but have some idea, it's an amazing read. Okay, well, next you have a memoir that some readers may identify with, which is that? Yes, uh, that is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, which uh, has been out for around three years, but it's one of our top checkouts still. Mm. Uh, very popular. Uh, it's about uh, her reflecting on her relationship with her mother, who passes away from cancer when she's 25, and she talks about uh, the journey of their relationship throughout her life, and also when she was taking care of her when she was ill and through her illness, basically. Is this a local? Because the H Mart. Yes, yes H Mart. Yeah. So it's a well known uh, Asian market. Yeah. And so it, a lot of the book is about her identity and how losing her mother, she's half white, her mother was Korean, yeah. and how losing her mother, she wanted to hold on to her identity, and food was one of the ways oh. that she would do that. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting concept for a memoir. Yeah. Um, for those who are into thrillers, wh what would you recommend? So for that one, I went with Frida McFadden. She has a new book called The Coworker. She's very popular. She yeah. Over the last couple of years, she's really blown up. She had a series called The Housemaid that was really big. Yeah. And The Coworker is her latest one. <laughs> And that is about, uh, an, it's an office thriller, which I think everybody, <laughs> those are always fun. And it's about two women, one who's a little unusual uh, and to herself who works in the office and another woman who is popular, the, the popular girl in the office. The unusual one disappears <laughs> and the popular one notices and it kind of falls down a rabbit hole. What really happened to this woman Ooh. and what was their relationship? Because it's told from their each of their perspectives. So it's really good and her books are really great they're accessible to everyone. Like, if you're not a big reader, right. or even if you are, you'll like it. Okay, I want to get to this last one. A steamy romance involving a trainer and a hot basketball player. Yes. Uh, love <laughs> Sounds like relationship goals. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is called Love and Sports Ball by Mika James. She's an indie author. This is her first traditional publication. Yeah. And she writes predominantly black queer romance with women. Uh -huh. And so this is about an athletic trainer who has a one-night stand with a woman. And when she goes to her new job, she finds out that that woman was one of the players on her team. Ooh. And so <laughs> kind of will they, won't they, can they kind of situation. Yeah. They work together. It's really fun and steamy. Which of these is your favorite? Ooh, which is my favorite? I mean, I think I'm going to go with James just because yeah. Percival Everett is an amazing writer. Yeah. And that's such a classic. Yeah, oh yeah. It. Kiddos, for the kiddos. Yes, so that one, there's one called uh, Ruby Finds a Worry. It's by Tom Percival. He's an illustrator and an author, and his books have to do with uh, teaching children about emotional intelligence. And so they're all the stories are picture books, uh, great for maybe ages three to eight. Yeah. And it's amazing because it, lets kids learn about their feelings. And in this particular one, Ruby is this really self-assured little girl who suddenly has a worry that is in the form of a little cloud that starts following her and grows bigger and bigger ah. until she meets another little boy who also has a worry. And then they discuss it and they learn how to deal with it. It's really amazing. And the series, it's a, several books, they're great. And I read that's them to amazing. my daughter all the time. Oh, that's great. Right. We've had that cloud, I've had that cloud with me. My <laughs> I think everybody. Yeah. Said that that cloud. Exactly. <laughs> Cassidy, thank you so much. Thank you for really having me. Appreciate it. It's great. a great list there. And to see more reading recommendations or to check out any of these books, visit nypl.org.